Hi everyone, welcome to part 4 video of this video series where we are trying to retrieve VM details from Azure and populate ServiceNow via CMDB. So in this video we will see integration hub ETL setup. Uh, so we will log into ServiceNow, uh, go to module integration hub ETL. Once you do that, it will show you all the ETLs which are available. Click on new and it creates a new ETL. Uh, so you can select any existing application or you can create a new one. So I'll say CMDB demo uh, app and discovery source is other automated. You can also give uh, any discovery source name if you want. I'll say Azure VM as a name, data sources Azure VM. And then save it. So once you save it, it uh, saves this record. You can click on mark complete and go to the next steps. So when you prepare data source for mapping it will show you the it will preview the data and then it will show you so you can do the mapping so before we do this step we'll try to understand what we're trying to map and then we'll do this step the first thing we need to do is we need to map the subscription to a table called uh, service account uh, and then we need to map data center to logical data center table and then we need to create a relationship between data center and subscription and then similarly we need to create a relationship between uh, uh, between data center and virtual machine in, in addition to that we also have to create few fields which are required for uh, field mapping for example like day time uh, is something which is required for all the CI classes so we need to create uh, static column with the date time value so we'll see all of them uh, before we do this uh, we will understand why we are trying to create the relationship uh, for these two classes so let's look at the ci class manager first so if you go to ci class manager and look for uh, uh, logical data center that's the first class you can see that this class has uh, uh, dependent relationships with cloud service account so which means you cannot insert data into this table without uh, having a association with this record right so which means as per IRE you cannot have a standalone record in this table without it having a relationship with this record right that's why we are doing that uh, step so that's why we are doing the step where we are trying to do a relationship uh, and the next thing is with the virtual machine so let's look at that as well so here virtual machine instance so we go here and then we can see the dependent relationships so as you can see it is hosted on logical data center so which means either it has to be hosted on a virtualization server if it is a vCenter based uh, virtual machine or if it's a cloud it's a private public cloud based VM then it has to be hosted on a logical data center and again you cannot insert record into this table without having a relationship to this hosted on uh, logical data center so that's where IRE comes into picture so that is how uh, that is why we need to have those relationships also in place uh, before we can uh, insert data into the tables right so now let's do the mapping now let's go back to the uh, import set uh, transformer and then we'll do the mapping so let's go to integration of etl let's refresh this we should see the new uh, etl so let's open that and then we'll do the mapping so to do the mapping we click on preview and prepare data so I click on that so this is how the preview looks like now we want to get the name of the VM which is demo VM I want to get the VM ID but I want to parse it from this property section so I will tell you how to do that and then we need to also get the subscription which is also part of the properties it is also part of the uh, one more field uh, it's part of one more field called UID where I will also I'll get the subscription right so I will uh, tell you how to parse this as well right so first let's uh, parse the properties and then this one so to parse the properties because it's a JSON file it's a simple JSON update I can do right so I go to this drop down click on new transform and then transform type I will say script operation and then here the output column is VMID uh, if I scroll down here I have to write my script to parse this value right so I I just will uncomment this line and then I will say uh, so it's input 
input dot vm vm id uh, if i do this i should but i need to write a pro, uh, like a line to process the parse json and then i have to use to this so i'll, I'll add the steps here uh, so this is the steps which i have to add i have to say i have to i made a new variable called input json i'm parsing the input uh, which is this value uh, sorry which is this value and then i'm trying to get the vm id from here right so and then i click on apply so once i click on apply i'll get the vm id as a new column here so let me do that the new column looks like this <coughs> uh, yeah so this is the new column which is created so now i'll do the same thing with the subscription also uh, but there i'll be using a different parsing technique so here because it's a slash separated string i should be able to very easily parse this through a uh, technique called uh, uh, you know split so let me show that so I'll use split and then I will say input column is this character separator slash and then when I click on generate output column it will generate the output column so let me click on that so if you see here it gives you like a sample output which tells you this is a subscription ID so I'll just want to give that value here and similarly resource group also is a column here so I can give that there and then I click on apply so that uh, and then this is the VM name so I can use that also uh, click on apply so now we can see that the new columns are coming up which is subscription ID resource group and I think we also made one more VM name that should come up as well yeah so all this have come up so that's how you will parse the URL if needed right we all, I have showed you two, te two techniques one is a JSON, JSON parsing another is the URL parsing so uh, yeah that's how you can use the parsing techniques to uh, in the transformation step so now let's mark this as complete and go to the next steps so next is to map let's select the classes so we have to select three classes one is uh, uh, logical data center save add class uh, subscription save okay not subscription sorry uh, this is not we have to select uh, service account yeah so you have to select that and we have to save it and then next will be the main class which is virtual machine instance and save it so let's do the mapping but before we do the mapping uh, we need to also do the timestamp uh, field so let's do that as part of the mapping uh, so I click on setup mapping and then I will select uh, native key is going to be UID let's drop that here timestamp I have to give the value this is going to be UID I need the name so I'll get the name save it and the name is here and then we also want the VM ID uh, let's VM ID right so we need all this so we are setting it the next thing is uh, I need a column to get the date time value so let me bring that up so click on new transform select set fixed value column uh, here okay wait not that sorry uh, so I'll select new transform just select use source column and then I'll select script output script operation I'll say date time and then you can select any input column doesn't really matter so let's give that and then here I have to say output is equal to new uh, glide date time and apply it so you do that it gives you this field so let's use that in the mapping uh, so that's how you can map the uh, this re source recency timestamp so this completes the mapping for virtual uh, machine instance so I'll repeat so native key will give you ID uh, date time will give the new field object ID is UID name is name VM instances VM instance let's go back and do the mapping for the classes so let's do the cloud service account so the only thing that matters is, is a subscription ID so let's drop that here in the source column also date time is this account ID subscription ID 
so data center we have to give uh, it's a value we have to hard code so let's again make a new static value I'll say data center name and then uh, data center name uh, and then I have to give the column name I'll get that uh, let's So this is the record, so let me just quickly get the name of data center type. So this is the value I have to use, so let me copy that. And uh, use that here. Uh, okay. So I'm going to assign the value here, I'll apply it, go to map to CMDB, and then I'll drop that here. Then object ID can be again subscription ID, so I think we are good there. So that's about the uh, cloud service account. Let's go back and then we'll map logical data center. Uh, so this is going to be. Uh, so here I'll map everything to the East US 2 value only. Uh, so I'll just gonna drop that here, uh, drop that here. Object ID also is that, region also is that. And I'll add an attribute called name. I need that as well. So save it. Uh, and name also can become this. And timestamp will be the daytime field which we created. So that's that. Uh, so that's about the column mapping. Now let's do the uh, the relationship mapping. So so it, now let's click on add select logical data center cloud pm so the moment you select parent and child relationship type is auto populated so let's click on add let's add one more virtual machine instance bound uh, okay we need cloud. okay and then again parent and child it automatically adds it click on add so let's mark this as complete and let's do the test Let's go down, test and roll back, run integration. So as you can see, three classes have mapped records updated from this integration to relationship between the classes. So basically we have already, uh, the data is already present. That is why it did not update them. But you can see the activity log to see what happened. So it tried to run the IRE. There are no errors, all good. And then it was able to update the records so let's look at the records so let's go to uh, we can start with logical data center is to us so if you see here this is related to the uh, cloud service account which is azure azure cloud and then a demo vm which is your virtual machine let's open that and we can see that this is the oid and then uh, we also have a column called vmid so let's bring that up so let's bring that so this is the vmid so whatever you have mapped they're all coming up here so that completes the etl setup right so let's do a quick recap so first thing we did is we verified the classes which we want to map and then we understood the dependent relationships that requirement and then we went to ETL and then we went to integration of ETL then we uh, made a new ETL record uh, after that uh, we have we did the basic setup the name and everything uh, and then the next thing we did was we did the mapping so we add few new columns like for example data center name date time uh, resource group subscription id and then we also have added uh, uh, vm id vm name all of that uh, for that we have used two types of uh, transform operations one is script out script operation and other is a split operation and then after that we did the mapping uh, where we selected the classes that needs to be mapped and then we did the field mapping uh, like this uh, the same thing was done for other classes as, as well 
and then we also did the mapping for relationships uh, where we have mapped uh, logical data center to cloud service account VM to logical data center and then after that we tried the uh, test and rollback integration thing we clicked on run integration so nothing is done so click on mark complete and then return data so that completes that and then after that we can set up a import schedule where you can say run this every day like at a specific time and so on right so click on new and then so name is azure azure vm daily load data sources azure vm run daily at 12 am all good right submit so this makes sure this will make sure that this is run on daily basis uh, thank you for watching this is anil